everybody. Welcome to So Says Chernoff. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Josh Chernoff, and uh, we've, we've upgraded a little bit here. Not only a set, but a live studio <laughs> audience. Now when you watch this, you won't have to ask yourself if I was trying to make a joke. <laughs> See? All right, let's jump right into it with a brief look into the history of TLC as we look forward to this Sunday's live event on the WWE Network. TLC stands for Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, combining three of the most iconic gimmick matches in wrestling history. Who can forget the epic ladder match between the heartbreak kid Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon at WrestleMania 10, or the tables match between the Hardys and the Dudleys at Royal Rumble 2000, or that revolutionary chairs match. Okay, so two of the most iconic gimmick matches and a match where you are legally entitled to repeatedly beat the crap out of another human being with a metal chair. And this is how absurd these rules really are. There was a match where Batista defeated The Undertaker with a chair shot to the head until the match was restarted because Batista had previously used an illegal low blow. That's right, <laughs> crack him in the skull with solid steel, legal. Forearm to his undercarriage, that's a no-no. <laughs> the reality is both moves should never be legal. They're equally as devastating. And if you're thinking, Josh, how is Batista smacking around Taker's tombstones equal to getting <laughs> smashed over the head with a steel chair? You've obviously never been hitting the balls. <laughs> the first ever TLC match took place at SummerSlam 2000 and saw the Dudley Boys, that's boys with a Z, versus the Hardy Boys, again, that's boys with a Z, versus Edge and Christian, who, you guessed it, was spelled with a C because that's how you spell Christian. Edge was with a Z. But even with all those Zs, this match was anything but a snooze fest. See what I did there? <laughs> the fast-paced, high-risk action set a new standard for not only ladder matches, but matches as a whole. The TLC match was a turning point in the Attitude Era and raised the bar to a level that wouldn't be surpassed until many, many months later when they did it all over again at WrestleMania 17. Today, at the end of 2018, it may be hard to understand how exciting TLC used to be, because for the past decade or so, it's been a mid-level pay-per-view. Sometimes there's just a tables match, or a ladder match, or even the dreaded chairs match. I think that's what that is, I, I don't know. But there's always a TLC match or two, and unfortunately, like many other things in wrestling, it's become watered down. But all that means is that the WWE has a chance this year to really make its mark with TLC. Will said mark be made or will it be missed like Aleister Black hitting Lars Sullivan with a spinning kick? <laughs> it was the wind that knocked him over. So all this talk of TLC brings back memories of hardcore wrestling, which brings up thoughts of the old ECW. I recently took a trip to the ECW arena to find out which weapon some diehard fans prefer best. Is it the T, the L, the C? Or is it another letter altogether? Tables, ladders, and chairs. Before they came together as a pay-per-view theme, these instruments of climbing and dining were a staple in the South Philly-based ECW. So if I wanted to really get my finger on the pulse of what TLC is all about, I needed to go to the source. Hello everybody, I'm here at the ECW Arena where fans come from all around to pay homage to the mural behind me and reminisce about What's your favorite weapon of all time? Uh, I gotta go with the easy one, steel chair. The steel chair, okay, chairs. Table. Table, okay, now, if you were on the receiving end of getting one of these, uh, these weapons in an attack, would it still be the same answer? Yeah, <laughs> I, I, love the, I love the sport, so yeah. So you still, you still wanna be hit yeah. with a steel chair? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's fine, that's, it's okay, and you? Probably not at the moment, but if you ask me like a month later, I'll probably go, yeah, still table. Okay, so right now you don't want to go through a table. At this very moment, yeah, you don't. You, but a month from now, if we were to come back and meet up about a month from now, yeah, then you'll go through a table then. Probably, yeah. Okay, I'll take down your number. We'll just meet back here in a month. Right, right. We'll put them through a table. All right, your favorite 
weapon of choice? Uh, favorite weapon of choice? Um, well, I'm old school, so I like the Attitude Era. So the kendo stick, love the kendo stick. You know what I mean? Now, if you were on the receiving end, would that still be your favorite weapon? <laughs> you know what? You only live once, I'd take it. I got a high tolerance, you know what I mean? It'd be fun, exciting, the crowd was going nuts. Favorite weapon of all time? Probably the Cinnabore Cane, just because I'm such a big Sandman fan. What is your favorite weapon of all time? The steel chair. The steel chair. All right. Now, if you were on the receiving end, would that still be your favorite weapon? No. All right. What would you rather take? If you had to take a weapon, what would it be? The sledgehammer. So you would rather take a sledgehammer to the head than a steel chair? Yes. Why? Uh, a lot of brain damage in the chair head and stuff. And the sledgehammer is a little bit safer. Okay. Would you rather get a Singapore cane from the Sandman or head from Al Snow? <laughs> yeah, uh, I definitely don't want head from Al Snow. Yeah. No. We, we so don't know no. where he's been. No, that's a definite no. Yeah. All right. Would you rather get the cane from the Sandman or head from Al Snow? Ooh, that's a tough call. I'd probably go with head from Al Snow. All right, so you'd rather have head from Al Snow. Yes. All right, so you'd definitely rather get head from Al Snow than uh, the cane from the Sandman. Absolutely, 100%. Head all the way. Head, head, head. Your favorite weapon of all time? Uh, favorite weapon is probably the Sandman uh, with the Kindle stick. All right, Singapore cane. Would you uh, still say that if you were on the receiving end? Uh, no, I'll be given the, uh, uh, the, uh, the whoopings. Oh, okay. Oh, to the Sandman? Yes. Well, right. not, not we can go find him. He's right over there, yeah. <laughs> well, not Sandman, but anybody else. What is your favorite weapon of all time? TLC matches. So tables, <laughs> ladders, and chairs. Would you rather get a kendo stick from the Sandman or head from Al Snow? Uh, uh, I'll definitely take a head from Al Snow. All right, so you, he will take head from Al Snow. Well, yeah. Okay. You want head from Al Snow? Yes. Sure. You know, Sonny's here. Yes. Okay. If you had to pick one of the tables, ladders, and chairs, what would it be? Ladders. Really? Okay. Yeah. Now, if you were on the receiving end of one of these weapons, would it still be ladders? No. No? <laughs> no. Which, what would it be, do you think? Probably tables. Okay, you'd rather go through a table than be hit with a ladder or fall off a ladder? Yeah. I can, under, I can understand that. Yeah. What is your favorite weapon of choice? Barbed wire. Barbed wire. Your weapon of choice. Weapon of choice? Wow. Uh, it'd be some type of sword. A sword? Are we talking about wrestling? Yeah, I was talking about wrestling, but I mean, this is, okay. we're in the ECW arena, anything yeah. goes. If you were on the receiving end, would that still be your favorite weapon of choice? Yeah. You, you want to be uh, baseball bat, barbed wire. a baseball bat, a barbed wire. That is, if you're on the receiving end, you want to be hit with a baseball bat with barbed wire. Yep. Uh, why? I already, I already was before. And, they, and it was a good experience for you, and it's one that you'd like to do again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> do you have a favorite weapon? A stick. A stick? Okay. But you would never actually hit anybody with a stick, right? No. What is your favorite weapon of all time? Does it have to be a hardcore weapon? Can we can we can we use a little bit of a deathmatch scene of this type? Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do that. Like like light tubes, razor boards. Sure, yeah. I, any anything that makes you bleed basically. Still chair. Always. Steel chair. Yeah, let's go classical with it. Yeah. Okay. I, I, I kind of miss the headshots. I know it's violent and unnecessary now, but. Hard but you like it. it. Yeah, you, you want to like, see it. You like what you like. You want to just see people get hit in the head with a chair. I That's can right. respect that. Okay. okay. Uh, what if you were on the receiving end? Would it still be the weapon of choice for you? Mm, no, probably not. If I, if I may ask, if I'm not being too forward here, where would you like to be hit by this barbed wire baseball bat? On my thigh. Okay, on your thigh. Not on your head, not on your back. On your thigh. Specifically on your thigh. Mine would have to be the classic old-fashioned steel chair. The steel chair. Okay. Now, if you were on the receiving end of the weapon, would it be the same answer? Yes, it would not. Be the same answer. Yes, it would not. Okay. No, it would not. All right.
If you were on the receiving end of said weapons, would you feel the same way? Yeah. So you want, uh, what, would, what would be your preference, a light bulb or razor blades? Probably, probably out of those two, the light tubes, light bulb, all the way. Have you ever been hit with a light bulb? Yes, I have. And that's something that you want to do again? Is there a reason you've chosen your thigh? It's one of my battle scars. Is that where you were hit before with the barbed wire baseball bat? Okay. So would you want to do the opposite thigh to just kind of even things out a little bit? Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. That's fair. Okay. What would it be instead? A pillow. A pillow? Yes. Okay. That's a whole different type of uh, wrestling. I think you can Google that. Yes, you can. Yeah. You can. Have you? On more than one occasion. Would you rather get a Singapore cane from the Sandman or get head from Al Snow? <laughs> head from Al Snow. <laughs> head from Al Snow. One of the questions we've been asking everybody is what is their favorite weapon of all time? Spatula. Spatula? Come wow, on, Wow, I did not anticipate that. I guess... I guess just making noise here. I don't know, but spatula, I guess, is the answer? Spatula is the answer. We're going to go spatula. Spatula is his favorite of all time. Well, if there's one thing we learned here at the ECW Arena, it's that people like chairs. They also like swords, uh, spatulas, and, uh, oh, a barbed wire baseball bat. Not too many people like T, not too many people liked L, but a whole lot of people liked C. And head from Al Snow. Welcome back. With TLC this Sunday, let's take a quick look at some of the matches we have to look forward to. Ronda Rousey versus Nia Jax for the Raw Women's title. Seriously, I, I don't even know where to start with this. Forget that we've seen this already. Nia Jax is just, can I be real with you guys? She's not good. I'm not trying to be a jerk or an internet troll, but she just doesn't do it for me. Does she have heat? Yes, but it's not good heat. It's not character-driven heat. It's brawl-for-all heat. You know, something that on paper may seem like a good idea until it legit punches your up-and-coming star in the face derailing your career. In the end, I think Ronda Rousey will be leaving with her Raw Women's Championship as long as she doesn't come down with another case of the pink eye. <laughs> hey, so Becky Lynch has bounced back from getting butter beaned by Nia Jax, which is great to see. She continues to identify as the man and heads into this Sunday's triple threat as the SmackDown Women's Champion. There she will face Charlotte Flair and the artist formerly known as the next breakout star in women's wrestling, Asuka. Man, have they really dropped the ball with Asuka. Once destined for greatness, she has since fallen into the same category as The Ascension, Bobby Roode, and almost anyone else that has come up from NXT, except Nakamura. I mean, he's US champion. Let's take a look at his match for this Sunday. <laughs> but maybe this match will be Asuka's opportunity to shine because this triple threat match is the first ever women's TLC match. And all snarkiness aside, I have high expectations for this match as all three women have what it takes to steal the show. But that's not the only triple threat on the card. And no, I'm not talking about Lana. <laughs> Seriously, she can sing, she can dance, and she can act like she's an angry Russian or a happy ballroom dancer or the groupie of an 80s hairband. I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the triple threat for the tag titles. The Bar defend against the New Day and the Usos. Have we seen this like a hundred times? Like I know we haven't, but haven't we? I mean, there's, there's nothing new, nothing exciting about this. Will it be a solid match? I'm sure it will be. There's a lot of talent between these teams, but please give us something new. The cereal is stale, the, the pops have melted, the pancakes are, are still you know, pretty awesome, but it's time for something different. The fact that each of these teams have five title reigns between them is both impressive and kind of speaks to my point that we may have seen this before. While SmackDown's tag division, in my opinion, has been consistently superior to Raw the past few months, we are in need of a shakeup. Moving on. Finn Balor versus Drew McIntyre. I know the whole Balor Club for Everyone slogan was supposed to represent inclusion, but sometimes it kind of feels like an order. 
whether you like it or not, everyone gets a Balor Club. You get a Balor Club. You get a Balor Club. Yeah, I don't want a Balor Club. <laughs> right? I'll take the demon, but please keep the smiling shell of Prince Devitt. Prince Devitt is to Finn Balor as the Bullet Club is to the club. Watered down with no direction. On the opposite side of the ring, however, you have Drew McIntyre, who is awesome. And that's the thing. I'm not trying to be critical. But as most wrestling fans would agree, the WWE makes it really difficult not to be. When you present something the right way, like a Drew McIntyre, I will be positive. When you give us Finn Bailey, I will vomit a little. <laughs> all in all, Finn's in-ring ability combined with Drew's being better than everyone else should lead to a decent match. Elias versus Bobby Lashley. Now this should be fine. Hopefully we'll get an Elias promo at the start, and I'm actually a fan of Leo Rush and Lashley. It's different and sometimes funny. In the <laughs> ring, Lashley is a beast, but Elias is no slouch either. Even with Elias's momentum going into this match though, I still think Lashley will be able to pull out a victory, presumably from his ass. <laughs> Braun Strowman will go one-on-one -on -one with acting Raw general manager and he who dealt it, Baron Corbin. <laughs> This match is full of gimmicks and stipulations. Braun wins and he gets his match with Brock Lesnar for the Universal title. If Corbin wins, Raw's ratings take an even greater nosedive and the show is eventually canceled. I'm sorry, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry, if he wins, he becomes the permanent Raw general manager, so, you know, what I said. <laughs> for those who have listened to me speak about Baron Corbin in the past, it should come as no surprise that I am not a huge fan. However, some have taken this to mean that I dislike him personally. First, I've never met the guy. And second, just because I dislike his overall physical appearance and the way he dresses and the sound of his voice doesn't mean I don't like him personally. I'm sure he's fine. The real question mark in all of this is whether or not Braun Strowman will even be medically cleared to compete after undergoing elbow surgery. Of course, if he doesn't compete, Corbin could win by forfeit, but then the fans get cheated out of an advertised TLC match, and what's worse, they get Baron Corbin as Raw General Manager. <laughs> I, I'm not sure that I've ever cared more about the outcome of a match. There is a reason why Raw's ratings are dropping, and it's not just Baron Corbin, but he's definitely a large part of the problem. WWE, please listen to me. I know what you're thinking, and it's not true. Just because we hate him doesn't mean we love to hate him. He's not Mr. McMahon. He's not Eric Bischoff or Triple H or Stephanie McMahon. He's not even Vicky Guerrero. These are characters people loved to hate. He's express clothes on a Walmart mannequin. <laughs> he looks like if Hot Topic and TGI Fridays merged, except instead of flair on his vest, he wears little buttons with his own face on it. Whatever happens in this match, please don't double down. Don't try and tell us fans what we want to see. We're quite capable of telling you ourselves. Don't believe me? Check your ratings. The Intercontinental Champion Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose, seen here wearing his homemade Bane costume because his parents were too cheap to buy the real thing. This should be a good match. Both competitors have a lot of talent. The one thing I find weird, and I'm nitpicking here, Seth Rollins is so torn up that Dean Ambrose would betray him, turn his back on his shield brethren. But like, that's literally what you did, Seth. You literally attacked Roman and Ambrose with a chair and joined the authority. It was kind of a huge turning point in your career. Then there was that time you cashed in money in the bank on Roman Reigns, stealing his WWE title at WrestleMania. So I'm just having a hard time getting behind Seth Rollins here because as the fans would say, you deserve it. <laughs> then there's Dean Ambrose. Forget the bad cosplay and the time you tried to look like a tough guy while taking it in the ass. I'm sorry, the, uh, when the doctor was giving you a shot in your buttocks. I should have phrased that differently for sure. All that aside though, what are you doing, man? Your vague references to how you're paying for your past sins by, I guess, creating new ones, how Roman deserves his real life situation because he power bombed a few guys through a table. Look, I know it's not your fault. You're just doing your job and way better than others on the show, but 
This feud needs to be more about two uber competitive guys who won't settle for being less than the other and less about some silly doctor's visit and gas masks. <laughs> By the way, Dean, don't blame Houston for needing to wear a gas mask. I already told you who dealt it. <laughs> Finally, the new Daniel Bryan faces the, I guess, old AJ Styles, current AJ Styles, I don't really know how this works. What I do know is that we have finally reached the point in the show where I don't have a complaint. This new attitude of Brian's is excellent. It's exactly what his career needed and exactly what the WWE's characters have been lacking. There is truth to his feelings about the environment and I love that they are letting him run with that aspect of who he is. Every great character is the real guy turned up, except for The Undertaker. He should be a zombie walking around the ring with gray or purple gloves. Anything else is, and I apologize for using this language, but anything else is booger red. <laughs> While I would have liked this feud to start differently than it did, not a complaint, just an observation, I am happy to see where we have ended up. I also like that there isn't a gimmick involved in this match. No tables, no ladders, I'm sure they'll be a chair at some point, but I expect a great match between two great professional wrestlers. I also expect Daniel Bryan to hold on to his momentum and his title heading towards the Royal Rumble in WrestleMania season. Well, that's all the time we have for you today. I hope you have enjoyed this look back, forward, and all around WWE TLC. We will be back with another episode this January as we take a look at my top five moments in Royal Rumble history. Until then, this has been So Says Chernoff, because that is what Chernoff had to say. Yeah.